Hi guys, it's Angela here. It's time to talk about seeds. This video is for my five friends and I who are crazy about planting stuff. If you want to start seeds, we're kind of like, you got to start your seeds. We're at the end here, people. We need to get a move on. Okay, so like not to add pressure, but um, if you started earlier, it's because you're super keen and um, you probably have some solutions for keeping your plants uh, warm, like maybe a greenhouse or an indoor growing situation. Um, but if you don't have that and you're just starting like in your window, then now's a good time probably to start thinking about planting them, planting the seeds, like now is a good time. Like no pressure, but you can always buy your plants later, no judgment, but plant a seed, you'll like it better. Yeah, it'll make you happy. Okay, so these are the things we're gonna start indoors. Okay, I made little cards for myself so I don't forget because I need to remind myself. So we're gonna do this in a few phases so that we don't get overwhelmed. That's the way I do it. So I know that this is not like, um, you know, uber detailed or professional, but I have to do things in like easy phases because we're busy and uh, you are too. So why don't we just kind of, it's, it's not gonna make a big difference if you do things a few days late or a few days early. So what's good about starting now is that you're not gonna have to baby your plants for a long time indoors before they're actually ready to get transplanted. And if you're in Southern Ontario where I am about zone four or five, then we're not doing that until the very end of May. So you have to take care of your plants indoors all that time. And if you plant them super early, they start to grow big and then they outgrow their cell pack and now you need to fertilize them and they're getting root bound. And so uh, sometimes it's good to start a little bit later. That way by the time they're big enough, the weather's warm enough, you can put them outside. That's probably like ideal. You don't want to pot up your plants like three times. That's like really annoying, right? Who has time for that? So. Um, what we do, what I do is, um, I don't know how things are done done, but I'll just like take my seeds and I'll use these little, so we had a bunch of these seaweed cell packs, right? So we poked holes in the bottom. We filled them with soil, um, with potting soil. Um, you know, if you've got compost, that's great. And we'll lay our seed on here, sprinkle, 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 right? Like, I know you're like, what? Yeah, sprinkle it, it's no big deal. And then cover with soil and keep it warm. Warm is the most important and light is good too, but warm is the most important because seeds don't need light to germinate. They need warmth to germinate, but once they do germinate, they start to photosynthesize and then they need light. So um, that's kind of what we wanna provide for them. Now what's gonna happen is that the cell pack is gonna be like filled up with, you know, I don't know, 30 little tomato seedlings. And then you do what Charles Doubting calls pricking them out. So you separate the um, little seedlings and you put them into their own little container. Do we have, do I have anything like, like maybe you, I might use like anything I find, like this I might find, well, tomatoes like things to be a little deeper. So like, you know, like um, if you've got some cups and what else do we use for tomatoes? Anything a little bit deeper. Basically everything that we don't recycle, we try to keep things and like just use them all up and then you're only potting up your plants once. So that's the way I do it because I don't like to pot up a bunch of times. It's really time consuming. And if you pot things up super early, you have to water them very often. So these are all arguments for why procrastination has turned out to be a good thing. That's what I'm doing. Rationalizing my tardiness. It's all right, people. We're still gonna grow some stuff. It's gonna be real good. So, and the grammar's gonna be excellent. It's gonna be really, really great. So I've got some things in here. Let's see, these are the things we should start, okay? And then you can decide if you've got this seed and if you do, that's awesome, go for it. Or go get some seed, you still have time. Get organic seed, okay? Certified organic seed, important to start. Is it gonna start raining right now? Not yet. Hold out, hold out. Things we're gonna start right now. Are we ready? All right, get your pen. It's basil, peppers, broccoli, cabbage, cauliflower, celery, eggplants, okra, kale and lettuce, although that could wait, tomatoes, leeks and onions, fennel and ground cherries. And I will make a note for if you're taking grapevine cuttings, if you're trying to propagate grapes, now is a really perfect time. Elderberry, if you're trying to propagate elderberry, cut those now. Goji berry, those kinds of things. 
And also if you're planning on planting any new perennials that you've never, like perennial flowers or food that you've never planted before, now's a really good time to give it a, a real chance um, to get big before you put it in the garden. And any flowers that you've never done before or that you know are not perennial. So that's like, it's, you know, it's not an impossible list. You don't need to do everything on that list. I think this year I'm gonna cut some things out because um, cabbage was amazing. Cabbage was awesome because only a few heads of cabbage, although you do need to cover it with row cover because otherwise you'll get bugs and they'll eat it all. But only a few heads of cabbage makes a lot of sauerkraut and that's what we ate all winter. So that's a definite happening. Cauliflower, I didn't even grow one head properly. If I have, if I have the gumption, I'll try that again, but I doubt it. Broccoli, yes, okay. We ate it, it was good. But again, takes up lots of space. So, you know, choose based on the space you've got, but most importantly, what you love to eat the most and what would really satisfy you if you like grew and picked and ate yourself. Okay, it's starting to rain. That's telling me we need to move along. So the next planting we're gonna do is going to be outside, direct sow. And that's supposed to be happening according to this year's Farmer's Almanac um, in early April. So that's um, now. Uh, so I'm gonna put this off by two weeks, okay? That's what I'm gonna do. Stick with me, it's okay. We're still gonna grow food, it's gonna be fine. The almanac is awesome, but it, you know, it's for early birds. We're okay, we're on time, all this well. Direct sow, carrots, oh, this is fun. Carrots, carrots could go in now too. Dill, that could go, yeah, now. Onions, like the ball bets, parsley seed, peas, radishes, spinach, turnips, sunflowers. Yeah, that's fun. Hmm. So I'm going to do that, not this week. I'm going to do it in two weeks. I think that's what I'm going to do. Okay. And then in mid-April, indoors. Okay. Then we can start our vining plants. I'm going to do those in that cold frame you see back there um, because I think it's going to be warm enough. And if it's not, I can put a heater in at night. So maybe if you don't have that, that's okay. You can start these indoors too. The vining plants will be fine. They like heat and then they're going to need some sun. So if you have a window, if you have some fluorescent lights, be, you know, like, you know, those ones in tiers, that would be super stellar. Or I turned one of my kitchen countertops into a grow space by buying one of those lights that you can just undermount. That's good for growing uh, herbs and vegetables. And that's what I use as a place to grow stuff and propagate stuff all winter long. You could do that too. You could start seeds like that too. Like if you don't have a good window or you don't have window space, okay? It's not expensive. I think it's really not. No, I know it's not expensive. Okay. So I'm gonna use the coal frame because I'm by this point I will have completely run out of space because we're going to fill up. Today when I do um, just that first list that we discussed. I'm gonna fill out this tote and all the little cells that are inside there. Right? So you run out of space. You have to think of other ways that you can start your seeds. So I'll use that coal frame and then we have some, I don't know if you can see it, but no, you can't. We have um, two big black um, tubs filled with soil that we can put some plastic on top of and we can start our, um, our greens in there as well because that heats up, right? You just have to remember to vent it during the daytime when it gets really hot so that the stuff that you put in there doesn't get fried by the um, by the little greenhouse that you created for them. Okay, so the vining plants are the cantaloupes, the cucumbers, pumpkins, melons, zucchini, squashes, and I put cardoon in there. Just because I like to spice it up. So, cardoon. It's beautiful, actually. I should probably grow the cardoon up front here where we can look at it every day because it's really good looking. Okay, in late April, we're going to direct sow some arugula and greens and chard and beets, cilantro, sunflowers. Oh, okay, some things are twice. I really like sunflowers. And then in early May, I had the second week and third week of May broken up, but we're going to direct sow the corn, the green beans, the parsnips, and then the third week of May, we're going to sow the sweet potato slips that we've already begun. And there's an earlier video for us to, um, to see what that's supposed to look like. Okay, so that's pretty, much, that's pretty much the planting plan for spring. That's starting everything from seed. If you just buy the plants, then you can just wait to buy the plants nearer to the um, end of May if you're here in Southern Ontario. But for me, it's time to go in and, um, you know, break open some of these pods. 
get the seed out. Some of that stuff I didn't get to. Some of these like these leaks here. Ooh, didn't get to last year, but they're fine. They're ready. They're waiting for me. We have all kinds of other things too. We're going to start some alliums. I've never had those. Blazing Star, another flower that I've never had. So those ones I will start early because I'd like to get I'd like them to get into the garden in a in a really nice, robust state of adolescence, florally speaking. Um, one more thing about seed that I noticed is that if you have a neighbor who offers you seed on something that grows really well for them, you should take it and try and grow that because there's something to say about uh, local seed. It, like, um, you know, it climatizes itself over time. I don't know what that's called. You know, it just gets better um, and it grows better and stronger. And I should really learn what that's called. There's got to be some science there, but I know it's true because my grandfather's charred seed grows a lot better than any of the other charred seed that I have. So that's, I think, where we're going to get started for today. Let's see if I had anything else that I thought we should remember. There are some things, yes, according to my notes, um, some things are frost tolerant. So you can put some things in the garden before we get our first frost, which we're expecting here in our zone about we're, uh, May, when is our, May 8th? Our last frost, last frost, last frost. We want goodbye frost, hello growing. That's what we're doing. Okay, um, if you wanna learn some more things about growing, there are some people I really should recommend because they're basically the people who taught me um, so much of what I know about growing stuff. They're all online. One is Keith from Canadian Permaculture Legacy, everything about soil science. I mean, it's just amazing. Um, Jess at Roots and Refuge Farm, um, definitely gardening with soul. She's beautiful. Um, and Charles Doubting, particularly for his methods of pricking out, um, using very little material to grow things, um, and multi-sowing. So here's a quick tip I'll say goodbye to. If you do have those little cells, you know, like those, those um, black plastic um, planting cells, you can put like three um, beets uh, or radishes together. Um, it's called multi-sowing. And then as they grow together, they kind of like grow out and give each other space, but they tend to grow better. Um, so um, I did that last year and it was awesome. So I'm definitely going to be doing that again. That was a lot of fun. And uh, in terms of growing into things, if you don't have a garden that you can dig into, um, you know, we, we've grown in buckets here. We've grown in um, feed sacks, um, bags, and uh, old chest of drawers, old drawers. Anything that you can find to put soil in will grow. It would be good if the water could escape, but even if you're on a balcony, if you think you've got no space, um, you probably do have enough space. Grow something, it's gonna make you feel so great. Uh, especially when you put it in your mouth and you didn't realize that what you had been eating until this point tasted nothing like that. It's a bit of an aha moment. So, um, okay, friends, it's starting to rain. I'm going to go now and uh, I'm so excited to grow now. Now I have to plant. All right, so um, I'm going to be doing this uh, on Instagram. Uh, I'll see you there, friends, and uh, we'll keep pace together and let's get some food growing. Thanks for joining me. I really appreciate your time. Bye.